What's up guys? We are Meta Money and today we are sitting down with the one and only Ben Armstrong and today we're talking about Shiba Inu entering the metaverse. So with that being said, Justin, why don't you ask the first question? Uh, absolutely. All right, so this is all over the news. Shib, they're launching their metaverse. Woo! 100k land plots, but you can only buy them with ETH. Now, I'd like to get to that in just a second here. But first, all right, so Sheeb's coming out there metaverse. What are your thoughts on this? Is this a money grab? <sighs> is it a money grab? It's, it's hard for me to really talk about Shiba in any serious capacity. Because it's a meme coin? Not because it's a meme coin, because the whole thing is a joke. Like, we seem to associate meme coins with jokes, but like Dogecoin isn't really a joke, right? If you go back to the earlier days, it's actually a pretty consistent performing altcoin since the very beginning. It's not like all of a sudden it came out of nowhere. Shiba wanted to hop on the trend that Dogecoin had kind of set, but they learned from Dogecoin that if you limit yourselves and just say, well, we're just a currency, we're just a meme coin, that you're going to hit limits of where you can go. And so Shiba, the people behind Shiba are constantly coming up with, with ideas to try to carry it into the next iteration of what it's gonna be. But nobody wants to take Shiba seriously. So the question is, what do I think about it? I just think the entire thing is a joke. You know, like the Shiba people don't wanna hear that. The Shiba people wanna be like, no, no, this is what is gonna set us up for success. No one is going to seriously use a Shiba metaverse. And he said, just wait till we get to talk about the ETH. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And so when you say like no one's going to use the Shiba metaverse, like I totally understand that. And I agree with it. I mean, eventually the goal, and if like, you know, if you followed the movie Ready Player One, you know, everything was connected into one. And to me, in my opinion, that's when we have a true metaverse. I, have, I don't see any way that there becomes any interoperability between some of these metaverses that we're seeing now that, you know, you got Sandbox, the Central Land, that have like a pretty decent working product or closer to it than most. And then a company like, or a platform like Sheep. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a much more interesting conversation is talking about the, the Board 8 metaverse, the, the Yuga Labs metaverse yeah. uh, that, that's coming because that has already got like a big community of people that are kind of in that world where the Shiba investor is just someone who heard there's a cheap coin, I should buy it. Right. And they went and they bought it. And, you know, people are quick to point out the, <clears throat> massive returns are cheap is the number one returning coin of 2021 in terms of uh, return on investment, you know, like 75,000% or whatever it is. Well, only the people at the very beginning that were behind the project realize those kinds of gains. So. No one will, that'll never happen again. Yeah. But I think the difference is like Shiba has a community, right? Mm -hmm. So at the same as the ape coin, but it's the partnerships and it's who they're like, what does she really have? Do they even have the team that's able to make this successful? And I, I don't believe so, but I mean, could they with enough money raised? Possibly, but I think the big difference is you have to have community, but you also have to have the team and the partnerships to be able to pull off a successful metaverse. What do you, now, when you talk about the community, what do you think about, you know, kind of the demographic of these communities? Because, like, you know, Ben said, you know, the Sheep community, that's going to be a lot of younger people who really don't have a ton of money, who on a pipe dream or on a hope and a wish bought a bunch of Sheep thinking like, oh, I'm going to get rich with this hundred bucks. Whereas the ApeCoin community, I mean, you got a lot of these people that are bored Ape holders that are, it's a $300,000 NFT. Yeah. You know, they've got a lot more money to prop up that project than a collective I don't want to say poor people, but a collective bunch of people who aren't financially secure yet, maybe. Well, they're at least poor in decision making. <laughs> because made a lot of money, though. Now, now, I want to be clear about that. that is, that's 100 percent accurate. And we would never, you know, demean anyone that made a lot of money on Shiba because c congratulations if you did. That's that's a big win. Learn from it and get out because what she their marketing practice from the very beginning has been latch on to something bigger and more successful and let's ride that. They did it with Dogecoin. Uh, they did it with Vitalik Buterin by sending him a bunch of free coins. They've done it consistently that that's been their strategy. But what have they really put out that's been successful other than the price rising? And when you look at that track record, at some point, that formula is going to run out of gas. And I think it probably already has. That's not to say Shiba can't hit a new all-time high because it certainly can if the entire market moves in that direction, but we're never going to see the kind of parabolic gains for it that we saw before. So if you were someone who came into crypto and you, you just decided like, this is the coin I want to get because people were making videos about it and you made money, 
that's good. I'm, I'm happy for you. That's really good. You've got to learn from that and move on and mature and move to projects that are going to be around for a long time. Because the big narrative for Sheba over the fall <clears throat> last year was the Renaissance is coming because Sheba swap or ship swap. How, how is that doing? I, I, I've never used it. Have you, have you ever seen it? No. No. No, no. The only people who you know, know about it are the people that were sold the dream yeah. from the people that have already made the money that want to make more money. Yeah. Uh, no one is going to use ShibaSwap as a major exchange. That's not a real thing. It's never going to happen. Just like people are not going to use the Shiba Metaverse. The only people that will be using it will once again be the people that already made the money that are trying to trick more people into coming in uh, to give them liquidity to sell. Uh, absolutely. All right. So a second ago, you said marketing. And I think that brings us to our next point, kind of the main point that we want to talk about is, okay, the, the founders came out and said, all right, we're going to do this big land sale. I think of the 100K plots, like only 62,000 are available for say, purchase. They're keeping the rest for, you know, in-house development, whatever. Uh, but with that being said, you know, they are going to only accept ETH for the purchase of their land. They don't want to use SHIB because they know that they'll dump the price to provide liquidity for the project. Does that even make sense? They understand Shiba is worthless. That's the entire proposition here. Because, you know, when I started Bitcoin Crypto like many years ago, one of the things that I found to be so interesting about a potential career in this kind of, uh, you know, in, in blockchain is the opportunity to have certain times where you will be able to receive payment to, to make money in crypto, to be, able to be earning crypto, not necessarily investing in crypto. You want to invest, it's good, but if you can earn, that supercharges everything. Why? Because you understand crypto is going to be worth more down the road than it is now. And so when we would talk to different projects and um, you know, back when we did sponsor content, they, they would come to me and they would say, uh, yeah, well, we would like to pay you in ETH or we'd like to pay you in USDT because we don't want to pay you in our coin because we think our coin is going to be worth much more down the road. Just like I believed crypto would be worth much more down the road. What the Shiba people are telling you is we believe Ethereum is going to be worth much more money in terms of return on investment than our own coin is or else it makes no sense for them to do that because the exact scenario I, I laid out a second ago where you earn in crypto, how advantageous that is because you understand the long term, they're saying, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. We, we actually don't think she was gonna be worth more than ETH um, uh, on the, the return on investment from us receiving this payment in this coin. And that to me is the most condemning thing uh, uh, of this entire debacle because the liquidity argument makes no sense because you would be receiving the coins back. You're not selling them. Right. right. So the liquidity argument doesn't make any sense. No. So anyone who believes that and takes that face value, I mean, you know, you just got to start making better decisions in crypto. That's really interesting. They'll be able to dump all the, the money that they earn. Like even if they wanted to sell the ETH instantly, they could, and then they're not technically dumping the price of their other coin, but then the community is probably, I would be mad. Yeah. I would be so mad because like, why, why would you not want the price to pump by everyone having to buy sheep in order to buy the land? Like I, if you are in the sheep community and, and they're saying, oh, we're not gonna use the coin, I would be pissed because that's like your chance to, for another pump or to help the community. So it just seems kind of crazy. Well, imagine, uh, imagine this. Uh, imagine if they were to take in the payment in SHIB and then instead of just taking all that money, they burned all those coins that came in. Burn it or lock it up or something. That's, that's the only way Shiba ever gets to be worth any respectable amount per coin. Not that that's that important. Yeah. Like it'll never reach a penny. The market cap would have had to be eight times bigger than the price of Bitcoin. To or even just to have penny. respect in general. Exactly. So, you know, because of all that and the crappy way they built these tokenomics, each coin is basically worthless. And they're showing you that, that even they believe that. There were talks a while back about them burning a gigantic amount. We know Vitalik basically burned a gigantic amount. Like they burn huge amounts all the time because it's completely worthless and they know that it's not going to be worth a massive amount over time. That's why they continue to try to cash out. It's, it's almost similar to you know, people that are trying to money launder uh, crypto that they've stolen from exchanges, hackers, right? 
it's really hard for them to do that to get enough liquidity and to be able to move the money around enough to be able to pull all their 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 money out. Same thing here. Like people in the beginning of shift made so much money, billions and billions and billions of dollars, they can't just pull that. They've got to keep coming up with a new ploy, a new ploy, a new ploy. And like I'm not saying it's a scam per se, because that the word scam, you know, seems to indicate that uh, you know, you have no chance to make a return. You do have a chance to make a return on cheap. Right. But when the team is telling you that they believe other coins are better than their own coin, that shows you what they think about their own coin. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we didn't want to use the word scam either because I, I don't think that's a scam. And that's why we chose to use the word money grab because that makes the most sense here. It's like, okay, how can we find a way to make a ton of ETH? Well, here we go. Let's, let's only accept that for the land. I think the key takeaway from this is sell the news like the metaverse is coming this is your chance if you want you know but i, I don't know but also we are uh, meta money and we talk about everything metaverse uh, on our channel so if you get a chance go ahead and check that out head over and subscribe to our page we'll really appreciate that um also though the metaverse is, is huge buzzword and that's kind of why we're a part of it as well but are people putting it in their names or are they starting their own metaverses just for money grabs. Like how many projects, how do you find a good project that has a metaverse like community? Like how do we, how do we find that? Well, of, of course it's a money grab, you know, like yeah. uh, basically, you know, so many crypto projects out there, you know, back when DeFi was big in 2020 over the summer, all of a sudden everything turned into a finance coin, you know, yeah. Yeah. everything turned DeFi into DeFi summer, man. DeFi summer. You had projects that completely pivoted what they were doing. Um, IOST was one that uh, I supported heavily in the beginning because I really liked the CEO and I really liked the guy that was in charge of their marketing at the time. I bought all into it and I still run a node uh, on the IOST network. You were like in the leaderboard, weren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were like one of the top, I think 15 nodes there at some point. But what happened is, is that the CEO basically disappeared. Um, and I don't know if he's on vacation still, you know, years and years later, but uh, then a lot of people that I knew there, they started leaving and all of a sudden the project started losing its way and it no longer had that direction. And so what happens in 2020? Guys, we're pivoting to DeFi. Like, just whatever the latest trend is, that's what we're going to do. We're going to move there. And, and it's such a common story in crypto. So you're going to see a lot of projects pivoting over to Metaverse and kind of trying to sell you on this idea that, well, this is where we are going the whole time. Yeah. Well, I, that's, I mean, that's the, the, the biggest takeaway, I think, you know, about this whole thing is, you know, you always want to do your own research. And in that, you know, if you're looking at a metaverse project, look at their history, look at their founders, look what they did. If they just rebranded a DeFi project to a Metafi, metaverse project, you know something's up. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's really funny is if you go pull up some of these projects and you start look, using the Wayback Machine mm -hmm. and start looking and seeing their previous iterations of their websites, like... If you go back a year ago, you know, all of a sudden they were talking about NFTs. You know, the year before they were talking about DeFi. You go the year before they were talking about, you know, maybe doing a decentralized exchange and they just keep changing and pivoting just to on get the more and more money. And they hope that at some point they'll find something that will be able to push their project to the next level. And maybe that's what Shiba is looking for. I just don't think they're going to find it. You cannot keep pivoting over and over and over again because every time you pivot, you lose a group of people that were excited about the vision you previously had. Right. And so, you know, I don't know how many people were excited about the vision of SHIB or something like that, but you are going to see this across the board. So many of these different projects, you know, moving into metaverse and figuring out now it's okay to figure out how your project, you know, what it looks like in the metaverse, of course, but you don't all have to have your own metaverse. There's not enough supply and demand. Exactly. That. That's, I think, a, a huge point to bring across. You don't have to have your own metaverse. No one has to have their own. Let's build one and let's all, you know, make it interoperable so that we can all, yeah. you know. Well, I, th I think you, kind of like we talked about last week a little bit with Everdome, like, I think you will have, d you do need different ones because there's different styles of play that people like. You know, some people are going to like, um, you know, the Minecraft style. Some people are going to like the hyper-realistic style. Some people are gonna, you know, find one that kind of mimics what they do in real life. So maybe we'll have a furry metaverse out there. Um, or you just make the one and you can just teleport to the land. Like, oh, let's teleport to the, the voxel land. Let's teleport yeah, to possibly. the fuzzy land. Just yeah. make it all one with the silos built into it versus having a bunch of, 
you know, exterior just, silos. We're just way far away from the capabilities to do that at this Five point. Five years? Yeah, and then someone, that would have to be like a big, like decentralized or centralized platform. So having them, having, yeah. being able to like port to different ones is kind of where we're going to go, uh, I think. But all right, so we have all this metaverse talk. We talked about kind of negatively about some of it. What is a metaverse project right now? Let's each pick one that we like, that we think has a better chance than the rest yeah. to succeed. Oh, this is tough because... I got mine. I would think we'd all almost say the same thing. I mean... I think mine's different. Okay, okay. Sandbox, duh. <laughs> there it goes, okay. <laughs> it's, it's sandbox, duh. Like, Sandbox is the easy answer. Animoca Brands is behind it. We actually have a video coming out later today on the channel um, about Animoca Brands and uh, everything they have worked out. It's gonna be absolutely huge. Uh, the only question is how many people will like the Voxel style and that opens up an opportunity for other projects. But Sandbox is just so far ahead of everywhere else. Decentraland has a lot of money and backing, but Sandbox has got the gameplay and the user base and the, I think the right demographic for what they're trying to do. So, you know, I love a lot of other projects, Walktopia, Everdome, there's a lot of metaverse I like. Um, we're getting some land in Everdome, but it's just hard right now to be intellectually honest and say, I think something has a better chance than Sandbox. Right, okay. I'm gonna pick Victoria VR. I like that one too. And only because it's one of those projects I think has started out with the metaverse in mind the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just like the money grab or changing their project over. So I think they, and they have the team too. I think they have like two or 300 people, which is like what a normal game development team has. Yeah. So that's one that I'm rooting for and hoping to see succeed. I like it. I like both of your answers for the, the reasons that you gave. Uh, mine is Everdome though. I love the hyper-realistic nature of it. I think for me, like I'm not a video gamer. I don't like the voxel style. The, you know, that's a to each your own kind of thing. Uh, so I love the style of Everdome. Are they doing everything cr like perfectly? Probably not, but I we like. Don't know it. yet. We right. Haven't seen it yet. Yeah. yeah, but I like where they're going, uh, and I like you know having these kind of conversations with you. I think the audience last week said you know this was a, a co pretty cool format. So thanks for joining us again. I love you all. Yeah, we love you, Bit Squad. All right, guys, leave a comment below with what. What's your favorite? Yeah, metaverse? What's your favorite metaverse project? And we'll see you next time.